You may have heard that eating too many carbs will raise your triglyceride levels, and then that will increase your risk for cardiovascular disease. But does the science actually support that? Today, I am going over scientific studies on how eating carbohydrates and eating a low-fat diet overall affects your triglyceride levels. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time researcher with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other people's studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And today we are talking about triglycerides and carbohydrates and low-fat diets because I have gotten this request a couple times, and now I've done the deep dive to figure out what is going on there in terms of the actual scientific literature. I'm going to try to keep this video short and sweet, but also packed with a ton of findings from a ton of different studies. And at the end, I'm going to talk about a way you can actually reduce your triglyceride levels and any triglyceride increases that could come from a low-fat diet in a really easy way. So stick around till the end for that. And first, for some very quick background, triglycerides are a type of fat in our blood that we get from food and that we also produce ourselves. And we do need some of it, but we don't want too much of it because it does increase our risk for cardiovascular disease. And the whole idea that eating carbs and eating low-fat diets raises your triglyceride levels came about mostly from a bunch of papers in the 90s and early 2000s. But missing from that whole discussion is whether the type of carb you eat matters or what type of low-fat diet you eat. But unsurprisingly, in more recent papers since then especially, it's been found that the type of carb really matters for what's going to happen to your triglycerides. So unsurprisingly, when you give people a bunch of sugar-sweetened beverages like soda, they actually do get a big rise in triglyceride levels, so that is true. Having refined sugar does seem to increase triglyceride levels. But on the other hand, if you give people fruit, that actually decreases their triglycerides. So eating carbohydrates in the form of fruit is very, very good for your triglyceride levels, whereas eating carbohydrates in the form of soda seems to be very bad for your triglyceride levels. But that's just adding different types of carbs to your diet. What happens when you actually have a low-fat diet made up of different kinds of things? Given that it's really low-fat diets and high-carbohydrate diets overall that has been focused on as a source of high triglycerides. Well, studies have found that low-fat diets, for example, this study with a low-fat diet that was 70% carbs and 15% fat that are high in sugar do cause increases in triglycerides. So if you really reduce your fat and add a bunch of sugar, then you do get an increase in triglyceride levels. However, importantly, if you swap out refined carbs like sugars and other kinds of processed carbs with complex carbs, you get a decrease in triglyceride levels, even on those same low-fat diets. And it's also been found that if you switch from a normal diet or a lower carb diet to a whole foods plant-based diet that is also very low fat, you do not get an increase in triglycerides. And for a fun finding for any of you who are interested in raw food diets out there, a study specifically looked at people who had been eating a raw food diet for a long time that was very high in fruit and low in fat, and they found that among 200 people eating this raw food diet, the researchers couldn't find a single case of high triglycerides. So everyone had healthy triglyceride levels. And it's also been found that resistant starch, which is found in starchy foods, decreases triglyceride levels. And so what all these findings are showing is that when you have a low-fat diet that is high in sugar, then you get an increase in triglycerides because of the sugar. <laughs> Whereas when you have a low-fat diet that is high in whole grains or high in fruits, your triglycerides either stay the same or even go down. So it seems like, unsurprisingly, the story of how low-fat diets affect your triglycerides or how carbohydrates affect your triglycerides varies based on the food itself. We can't just reduce it to low-fat versus high-fat or carbs versus not carbs. Although what's interesting is actually more recent meta-analyses have found that when you look at a ton of different studies that have put people on low-fat diets, you actually do get a slight decrease in triglycerides on average. And I would bet that this is because back in the day, in the 90s and 2000s, the low-fat diets that were being studied that did raise triglycerides were very high in sugar. Whereas nowadays, we know that giving people diets really high in refined carbs and sugar isn't really the best thing to do on average when you're trying to look for diets that will help people. So these days, low-fat diets tend to have less refined carbs and less sugar. So it makes sense that modern meta-analyses on the effects of low-fat diets would find that they are generally slightly good for triglycerides. And now, as promised, how might you be able to prevent rises in triglycerides from low-fat diets that are high in sugar or just from eating sugar in general? Well, there is actually a way to completely prevent a low-fat diet high in sugar from raising your triglycerides. So even if you do want to eat a low-fat diet that is full of processed sugar and refined carbs and all that, there is a way 
to circumvent the triglyceride rise, and that is through exercise. Specifically, as one example, a study found that when people were eating a diet that was 70% carbs, 15% fat, and not very healthy, so just a standard low-fat diet, and the researchers found that when they had these participants just do an hour of walking per day, it actually prevented the rise in triglycerides. So it seems like exercise is able to stop the negative effects of sugar on our triglycerides in large part. And so when you had a low-fat, high-sugar diet plus walking compared to a lower-carb diet, triglyceride levels were the same. And a fun fact is the only side effect from this low-fat diet is that people complained about being too full because the researchers matched the calories between the low-fat and the low-carb diets, and you have to give people so much more food on a low-fat diet to get people to get the same number of calories that people felt overstuffed. So that is a good side effect to have if you are trying to lose weight, and that is one reason why low-fat diets are so effective for weight loss, because you just feel really full because you have to eat so much more food to get the same number of calories. So what all these studies are suggesting is if you do the thing that we were evolved to do, which is move around every day, then you probably don't have to worry about the effects of low-fat diets, even if they're high in sugar, on your triglyceride levels. However, if you cannot exercise for whatever reason, then it does seem like you would be better off eating a healthier low-fat diet if you are wanting to eat a low-fat diet at all. And of course, in general, eating a healthier low-fat diet that's not full of refined processed foods is going to be better for you overall on every dimension pretty much than a low-fat diet that is full of refined processed foods. And of course, if you don't want to eat a low-fat diet, then eating a moderate-fat diet that is low in processed foods is just as good. So take your pick, whatever diet you prefer. <laughs> so I hope that this could alleviate any fears you might have had about low-fat diets. In general, if you are eating unprocessed plant-based foods, you can't really go wrong unless you are allergic to any of them, and that's pretty easy to find out just by going to an allergist. But in general, eating a diet that is high in things like whole grains and beans and fruits and vegetables and nuts is going to be your best bet for your health and nutrition. And if you want to get personal research deep dives done or want to weigh in on video topics or get bonus content on each video and in between videos, then check out my Patreon. And if you want to support me in making videos just for a one-time donation, then head on over to my GoFundMe. I really appreciate all of you who have helped out with the channel here. And both the GoFundMe and the Patreon are linked in the description below. And if you like this video, please like and share so other people can get this information and stop worrying about carbs and their triglyceride levels. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.